changing rooms. The Welsh are out on the on the right of that doorway, and here comes Gary Callender leading Scotland. And so that's a Scottish side who'll be all tensed up, and especially this uh, big lad here, Gary Callender, one of four Kelso men in the side and leading the team for the first time at Cardiff, but for the third time altogether. And listen as the crowd prepare to welcome the Welsh side. Great excitement down there as Donald McLeod, the uh, Scottish Rugby Union surgeon, comes out. And there, Tony Gray and Derek Cornell, the coach and assistant coach of the Welsh side. And here's Blethyn Boyan leading out Wales. Well, people will tell you that that uh, support is worth six points of a start to Wales. And there, Blethyn Bowen, one of the three policemen in the side, number 12, leading Wales for the third time, as indeed Gary Callender leads Scotland. It's hard to imagine anything more inspiring for this Welsh side, showing just the one change from that which beat England. Paul Thorburn in for the injured Tony Clement, reducing to three the number of club standoffs in the Welsh back division. The Davis Jones hinge to operates for the 18th time. Young Ian Watkins retains the hooking berth, and the captain for the third time is Blethyn Bowen. And Scotland hope to field the side who beat France, but they've won new cap in the Scotland B captain, Andrew Kerr, who forms a venerable link with Roy Laidlaw, a physically imposing back division with 31 major international tries to their credit, in wake of a workmanlike pack with John Jeffrey replacing the injured Derek Turnbull. A denizen of the darkened world of the front row is the captain, Gary Callender. And as the band of the 3rd Volunteer Battalion of the Royal Regiment of Wales, the 24th, 31st foot, leave the field, the players get ready for the start of the match. In ideal conditions, hardly any breeze at all, and there a rich experience in store for Frenchman Yves Brissy, 44-year-old ex-flanker with the Monteur Club, his first major international, and I tell you, he once sent off the Coventry and Bridge End hookers in the same match, so the fellas had better watch their P's and Q's down there. <laughs> referees assistant, Francis World Cup referees, René Urke and Guy Moret. We're all set for this crucial 92nd match between Wales and Scotland, as Gavin Hastings prepares to kick off. Fairly orthodox kick as up goes Phil May. Taken on by Roy Laidlaw. And Ivan Tukolo filled in a scrum half as he used to do for the Scottish schools. Gary Callender out there to Finlay Calder. Calder charging on, half caught there by Davies. Laidlaw, Scott Hastings, bad pass to Tate. Trouble there as Tate takes it. Scott Hastings goes on and Scott Hastings is into the corner. The referee has decided that it has gone into touch and that it'll be a throw-in. And Scott Hastings denied a fifth try for Scotland. He got as close as this, he made a lovely inward jink. And there a good tackle by Mark Ring just pushed his feet into touch. Now a big moment for Ian Watkins who came on, as you remember, as a replacement in the England match a fortnight ago for his first cap. The lad of Ebu Vale. Watkins throws, it's loose, Calder has scored! <laughs> Finlay Calder scores his first try for Scotland, four points to nil, and they've played just one and a half minutes. It was one of those very simple ones, all the jumpers missed it, Moriarty as well, and Calder had a lovely bounce, thank you very much. Well really it's a soft try that Wales concede here, and it's Richard Moriarty who didn't pick the ball up there, and it enables Calder, who stood a good couple of yards at the back of the line out, with a simple task of just going down onto the ball to score the try. 
And a great joy for Finlay Calder in his 16th international, giving Gavin Hastings this chance to convert the try. That's the shot from the tough end. Over at the west side. Hastings then, high enough, but wide. And so Finlay Calder, as I say, scoring his first try in his 16th international. And they'll be delighted up at Inverleaf in Edinburgh with that one. That's it, with about two minutes gone. But really, Scotland also had the opportunity when they missed a good overlap when Scott Hastings went into touch. So exciting stuff in the first couple of minutes. Jonathan Davis restarted. Taken in there by Cronin. Calder trying to drive away, helped by Norrie Rowan. Penalty to the Scots. And Robert Noster is uh, pulled away there by Finlay Calder. The referee's arm had already been up for the penalty. An offside penalty, the referee deciding the ball was in the ruck and players round on the wrong side. Scots have taken their kick to touch and that's the Welsh 22. And a great buzz of excitement all round this ground already. And listen to the cheering for Wales especially, but the big Scots contingent letting, their, uh, letting themselves be heard. Watkins high, Noster going, Jeffrey going through. Laidlaw, Laidlaw the chip kick. Penalty to the Scots. Robert Norshire just asking Eve Brissy what the penalty was for. And Gary Callender asks Gavin Hastings to kick for goal. That's the distance. And it's a lovely day for goal kick, I must say. The underfoot conditions are ideal. There's hardly any breeze at all. Flags waving just uh, very slightly up on top of the west stand. And great roars of song here, but Gavin Hastings having to hold his concentration here. Hastings then. Pulling it round. It counts. Seven points to nil, the Scots lead. They've played just about five minutes. Exciting stuff here. I've been very impressed by the driving play of the Scottish forwards that they picked up one or two loose balls. And I, I think at the restart here that Paul Thorburn would be far better kicking the ball deep into the Scotland 22 and try and settle his side down there. Because at the moment, the Scots have played all the game in the Welsh half of the field. And I think a long kickoff would be the best thing that he could do now to settle his side down. Paul Thorburn had to wait, of course, because they'd lost the ball. Uh, this is the big lad who's been brought back into the Welsh side and who's uh, kicked so many points against Stockton. A little kick away there by Blethyn Bowen. And the ball played on the full there by Ivan Tukolo. But, of course, it went out on the full. And so he loses the 10 metres. Mark Ring was ready to take a quick throw in. At the front of the line out for Wales, there is David Young, and there Phil May, this great veteran from Llanethley, who captained Llanethley five seasons running, Paul Moriarty of Swansea. Watkins with the throw. Through there went Richie Collins, down goes May, but it was knocked forward. just outside Scotland's 22. And there's Roy Laidlaw, I think his 46th international. Scorer of seven tries for Scotland. Well, that looked a very awkward ball indeed. A foot seemed to get in the way and the Scots really didn't get the strike that they wanted. That was more like it. Laidlaw to care, 
Kerr, what a good start for him on his left foot as well. That's the one new cap in the side, Andrew Kerr gets a little pat there. Referee has given a penalty to Wales. May have been for a bit of obstruction at the line-out. I think the penalty was that certainly when the scrum broke up, then the two sets of forwards were exchanging punches there, and certainly uh, the referee was in no doubt at all that Scotland had caused that problem and penalised them. And I notice now that they're just waiting for Staff Jones to receive some treatment there. Now, whether this injury to Staff Jones has anything to do with why Scotland were penalised at the scrum. Staff Jones being tended here by Tudor Jones, and uh, here's a sight that gives some Scottish rugby supporters nightmares. Paul Thorburn, you remember his five penalty goals here for Wales in uh, a couple of years ago, which really won the match for Wales. And there's Staff Jones, he uh, won Pontypool forward in the Welsh side, although, of course, there's Mark Ring who plays for Pontypool and he's in the backs. But he's a real bulwark in this front row. Paul Thorburn, Brocken decided just to uh, do this kind of job. It's high enough, but he's pulled it. And would you believe it? So both Gavin Hastings and Paul Thorburn have had one miss. And the disappointment is there for all to see. Gavin Hastings. Up goes Robert Nosher. Through there goes Derek White. Campbell, Laidlaw, Kerr, Kerr, that's a mighty Gary Owen. Tukulus coming up after it, so is Finlay Calder. Offside at the kick, I think. Wales being asked for the option. And a brief moment for this injury to Staff Jones. Now, this will be a real blow to Wales, although they've got a tough little... Prop Jeremy Hugh Pugh as their replacement, but Staff Jones has been around a good long time. He's 29. This is his seventh international. He's played in this uh, great Pontypool pack for some seasons now, and he's one of the two British Lions in this Welsh side. So he's a player of immense experience, and uh, Wales won't want to lose him, Bill. They won't want to lose him indeed, because I was very impressed by his display against England, that he certainly had Jeff Probe in the England tighter prop. In, in a lot of problems and uh, it's the last thing that the Welsh side will want to do is, uh, is lose him but it certainly looks as though it's a serious problem now that, uh, but I think they've got to replace in Jeremy Pugh the, uh, the Neath prop is obviously getting himself warmed up ready to come out onto the pitch instead of Staff Jones Well it's a prop looking after a prop out there because that's Dr John Davis a West Whalian who is the Welsh Rugby Union's medical officer and there Staff Jones in obvious discomfort and what a tragedy so early in the match for him to have to leave the field doctor has to decide whether he can return but it doesn't look as if he's going to Blethyn Bowen puts a left footer up towards the Scottish 22 and Wales for the moment are one man shot Good jump by Cronin. Through goes Moriarty. Moriarty charging on. That was a great drive. Now it's Robert Jones. Davis along the line to ring. Trying to miss out everybody. Hadley. Hadley tackled by Duncan. And one of those all-embracing Duncan tackles on this big lad, Adrian Hadley. And down below us, number 19, Jeremy Pugh is about to come on. But look at this lovely pass from ring. It bounced nicely for Hadley. But he didn't have the legs of Duncan, and Hastings did the rest. And they'll be delighted at nothing all in Neath as Jeremy Pugh comes on for his second cap. He got his first against the Americans in November after playing for the B team against France in October.
Jeremy Pugh, a forward who can pack on either side, but he's gone onto the loose head side right enough. Jeffrey going. Laidlaw burrowing in as well. Nori Rowan goes, throws off Jonathan Davis. The Scots forward playing with immense fire. Up to the 22. What a surging drive by Rowan. They're taking it on now through Calder. White's there as well. Now Cronin adds himself. Laidlaw, Kerr. Kerr, the narrow side. A very high crossfield kick. Tuchel is going up on it. An awkward bounce for Thorburn. Taken by Jones. Knocked down by Scott Hastings. Thorburn thrown, throws it out there. The pick up by Yayan Evans. Gavin Hastings straps it to the referee's whistle had gone. And what an amazing breakout by the Scots. From right on their own line, deep into the Welsh 22. A tremendous play by the Scottish forwards, especially Finlay Calder there. Certainly Derek Grant has worked wonders with his Scottish pack. I think the World Cup playing against New Zealand at Scotland have learnt a lot of lessons from that. And just the way that they broke down the field. But I think the referee blew his whistle a little bit early there. He played no advantage whatsoever and gave Gavin Hastings no chance at all to counter-attack. But tremendous display by the Scottish forwards there and having the confidence to attack from inside their own 22. This is where it started. Andrew Kerr, brilliant on the narrow side with those little twinkling steps and then a superb kick by him. That's the Welsh 22, a Neville bounce. Robert Jones was back and look there how Paul Thorburn was simply enveloped. Now here's the chance, that was the knock-on by Yayan Evans, but in actual fact from that moment Gavin Hastings might well have scored. That's right, certainly no advantage at all played by the referee in that occasion. Good Scottish scrummage, laid low to care, the drop goal, charged down there by Collins, taken there by Gavin Hastings, this is Matt Duncan. Laidlaw, switching to Kerr, Kerr kicking into space, back there goes Yayan Evans, oh good clearance work. Yayan Evans in his 11th international and a lovely bit of footwork there by him, the pick up facing the wrong way, the quick turn and away went the kick. Damien Cronin as Scotland have cut to two, thrown into calendar went forward Chalister Campbell who captains Hoyk this season came back into the side this season after being out missing the World Cup that's the Welsh 22 and there's one of the great scrum halves in world rugby Robert Jones John Jeffrey, number six on this side for the Scots, playing right and left as Jones is in trouble from Laidlaw. Jonathan Davies. And so real pressure on the Welshman here. And there, Jonathan Davies had to look very slippy indeed, but did well to get it away. Fifteen minutes of the match gone. Scotland leading 7-0. Calendar throws. Campbell falls, held by Richie Collins. Good drive by the Scots, Laidlaw out there to Scott Hastings. Scott Hastings to Duncan, an accidental offside as Duncan goes, feeding inside to Laidlaw. Yes, bumping into each other. Interesting to see a referee who's as tall as Yves Bressy. You can see over the top of things, he uh, looks like six feet one or so. Good strike by Wales. Well held in by Moriarty. John Jeffrey waits. John Jeffrey has to stay bound. Jones tries to catch him offside. Bressy did well. He looked behind to see for offside by the Scottish backs. Jonathan Davis. Beautifully angled kick across the forwards and uh, perfect judgment, it landed just in play. I think that last scrum will be a gentle reminder to the Scottish back row that they're going to have to stay down in a few of these scrums. They all like to run around the park but they must stay and do a bit more work in the scrum. 
Yes, that's the kind of ball that Roy James Laidler does not want. If you don't mind, fellas, I'm 34 years old, he's saying. Great battle in prospect at the line-out, of course, with uh, Ian Watkins here throwing so well against England when he came on as replacement. And, of course, Robert Noster, number five down there, one of the great artists at this phase of the game. But they are not getting up quite as high as usual. All that means it's a scrummage. And Wales getting the put-in. There's a Scottish front row, David Sowell on this side, then Gary Callan. Noddy Rowan, the veteran on the far side. It's a good, steady, well scrummage. They'll be pleased about that as Robert Jones goes. There's the fast one to Hadley coming in. Now the pick up by Phillips. Into the Scottish 22. Great subs there with Noster in. Robert Jones. The feed out along the line there to Ring. Ring. Corburn. Yayan Evans. Tackled by Ivan Tukamo. So Ivan Tukolo very cleverly stayed out just now and took his man. And there the Alan Tate of Kelso, the big Scottish centre, and Phil May is hurt. This was a lovely ball. Notice the wee dummy first of all to Davis. Then in came Hadley and it was a good ball for Wales to win after Roland Phillips had surged on. Then Jeremy Pugh went on. Now, this was Robert Noster, the lock forward. And then, this was where the danger started. Mark Ring, and then Paul Thorburn, the fullback. But look how Tukolo cleverly left Thorburn to the men inside him and stayed with his man, Yayan Evans. Yes, that, that defence there is uh, all about confidence. It's a drift defence, and what happens is that you rely on the player on the inside doing the tackling for you, and uh, obviously Scotland showed that to perfection then. And so they're the most disappointed man, I think, in Cardiff at the moment. Staff Jones, who's had to come off the field. And uh, that's the score after almost 20 minutes. Phil May, the injured player. I suppose, Bill, one point about the drift defence and in relation to the winger is that with Paul Thorburn, who's not the quickest fullback in the world, the winger can afford to stay out. Yes, he can afford to stay out with his own man because he's hoping that he's his centres can cover that space down and uh, yeah, that's all very well but if Thorburn sort of put it to overdrive then you're in trouble good clearance by Roy Laidlock so it's great to have a fellow of his experience here the eighth player from the Jed Forest Club to be capped by Scotland Now this is Ian Watkins, the first hooker from Mebouvale to be capped. Great jump by Noster. Jones goes through, tackled by White, feeds on to Moriarty. Moriarty tackled there by Callender. Still Wales is put in. Robert Nicholas Jones of uh, Trebanus. Plays for Swansea. Oh, good reverse pass. Jonathan Davis. There's that acceleration. Very, very quick. Back goes Derry White. The try is scored. Wonderful try by Davis. Can you believe it? An incredible bit of acceleration. All the congratulations there. And well deserved. Just watch it that initially looked to be not a lot on as he was forced to change. Now watch the little kick through and the tremendous pace. Look at Jonathan Davis beating Derry White to it. That was a very good individualist try. Paul Thorburn, 
unusual left shoulder side on and he's pulled it again that's most unlike him but Wales are back in the game they've played 20 minutes well it just shows what a good footballer Jonathan Davis is he looks outside and notices the Scottish defence so quickly yet he's so aware because of the hole left by the Scottish back row he's aware of Derek White there and he must give him at least three or four yards there in 15 and beats him Tremendous footballer Jonathan Davis as he showed just then. Gavin Hastings restarts. Hadn't gone the 10 metres. <laughs> 18 minutes of the first half to go. And it's all movement, it's all excitement. And just a change of shots for Matthew Duncan. And that's halfway. Moriarty, Robert Jones, there's a chance here, Davis couldn't hold it. Good rescue, but Tukolo was in there. Moriarty, Robert Jones again, ring. Missed out Pledenborn, right out to Hadley. Hadley the chip ahead, back goes Scott Hastings. And it was eventually Alan Tate who got it and put it into touch. Alan Tate, the third Kelso player to play centre for Scotland. Oliver Turnbull, the first in the 50s, and Roger Baird. Jonathan Davis, the injured player. And after that brilliant try, they won't want for a moment to see him going off. Wales very much back in the game after that try, Bill. Yes, they've been brought back into it by the, the, the scrummage, really, that they've been able to secure a very good ball. They've realised that the Scots have a lot of pace in the back row, so that they're, they're committing them to tight forward play, and that is enabling Jonathan Davies to just get a little bit more space than he had in the first 20 minutes of the game. And that's uh, Robert Leonard Norster laying down the law to his uh, forward, who've certainly come right back into it. And this is an area where Wales generally are very good, although they were badly out scrummaged at Murrayfield a year ago. Now, neither of, the, neither of the flankers are allowed to hold on to any opponent's jersey. The props are the only ones technically allowed to do that. And that's a penalty. And it may be for pulling down, yes, David Young penalised for pulling down with that right arm. Gavin Hastings he always looks uh, so totally in control of himself Gavin Hastings and that's another lovely spiralling kick that's the Welsh 22 15 minutes to half time 7-4 for Scotland who remember have won two of the last three games down here against Wales Roars of Wales, Wales as Watkins throws. Oh, great catch by Norster. That was line-out play par excellence. Robert Jones. It's awkward, but he was inside the 22 anyway. Quick throw into Finlay Calder. The feed on to Laidlaw. Laidlaw in again to Finlay Calder. David Shaw leading it back. Laidlaw to care to Gavin Hastings. That's a searching kick. But penalty for offside. The Welshman had encroached before the ball was clear from the second phase. And Blethyn Bowen inquires and is given a clear indication your backs are offside. So it's well within Gavin Hastings' range, it's a long kick, but there's no breeze to bother the players down there today. Gary Callender surveying the scene and uh, pondering on how tough international rugby is nowadays. Doesn't go far back, usually just three paces, then a couple and a half to the side. Now there's just a little hiccup before he starts, there it is, yep. and bang, 
as he pulled it round enough. No, it's wide. So it stays at seven points to four. And about 14 minutes to go to the break. Well, you could have got pretty good odds from the bookie that Paul Thorburn was going to miss his first two and uh, Gavin Hastings was going to miss two, that certainly all of them are well within the range, these kicks that they've missed. Jonathan Davis, ideal kick for his forwards, Noster there. Laidler just beaten to it by Roland Phillips, taken on by Pugh over halfway. Surging on, Roland Phillips again. Robert Jones half pushed in by Moriarty, Richie Collins standing off, tackled there by Callender. Good tackle too by Andrew Kerr. Jones, Davis looking for touch at the corner and he's done it beautifully. Wonderful judgment and technique from Jonathan Davis. He picked his spot, he kept it low, and he squirted it into touch. And that's the Scottish goal line. And the Scots feeling the pressure again as Cronin wins it, gets it second time. But it went accidentally offside as it went forward. Scott's tried to put on a big heave there, but it didn't work. Jonathan Davis, the drop goal, hook, but it still could be useful. Bending on the bounce, but it's gone out of play. Well, unusual for him to miss a drop goal. He's kicked 10 already for Wales and internationals. But the players are all pulling their shots. I know the feeling I do it on the first tee every time. Another pair of shots required. Yes, they're big burly boys nowadays, aren't they? Gavin Hastings is 16th international on the trot and he scored 198 points. And he's going to take a big one way downfield. Paul Thorburn waits. Well, it was meant to be a switch, but he didn't switch it, and Finlay Calder couldn't quite get to it. And that was a little bit of misjudgment. I think, um, I think Wales meant to do a scissors off Paul Thorburn, but he just went on his own, and it was really quite a useful little kick ahead. Scottish 10 metres line. David Soul against uh, David Young on this side. Now, you notice the... <laughs> <laughs> the two flankers having a private battle, Richie Collins and John Jeffrey. Jonathan Davis, Blethyn Bowen, along the line to Ring, there's a chance here as Hadley comes in, marvellous pick up by Ring, Yayan Evans, Evans all the way, oh what a blistering run by Evans, that is a magnificent try! Merlin the magician couldn't have done it any better, it was magic magic all the way, what a score! Just watch this. Jonathan Davis, Bowen, then Ring, watch how Ring picked up this low pass by Hadley, brilliant. And then, watch what this lad had to do. Yayan Evans, inside Hastings, inside Matt Duncan, inside everybody, jink, jink, jink. That was out of the top draw. Paul Thorburn, Matt Duncan claims that Thorburn offered to kick, but he hadn't. He does it now, it's over, and Wales are ahead. And here we see the try from back of the... Really, it's the inclusion here of Adrian Hadley. The Paul Thorburn is used there as a dummy move, and the loop round here that Hadley makes the ball available. But just really, I'm certain that Gavin Hastings must be kicking himself there for not picking up Ian Evans. But he's able to cut back, sidestep inside the Scottish cover, and despite a despairing tackle by David Sell. Outstanding try there by Ian Evans. His sixth try for Wales in major internationals. Gavin Hastings restarts. Jonathan Davis. 
That's a good return. So we were uh, all aware of the ability of the Welsh backs to string things together as they did against England for two lovely tries. And there's another beauty. Just switching at the line out. Alistair Campbell and Phil May there. But meant over the top to John Jeffrey. He's got it. Caught by Paul Moriarty. The pick up there by Finlay Calder again. Calder still surging on. Now the pick up by Laidlaw. Laidlaw to Kerr. Kerr to Alan Tate. Alan Tate inside to Duncan. Duncan has scored. What a game this is turning out to be. His seventh try for Scotland. And the lead seesawing all over the place. It was brilliant play by Finlay Calder. What a match he's having. Driving on, see how he took four or five. And then Laidlaw. Kerr, a lovely pass to his clubmate Alan Tate. He went in, took the defence with him. And then the scissors there by Duncan. A good try. Great play by Finlay Calder. He sucks in the defence. You see him driving, driving. The three or four defenders there. You notice how he keeps on his feet all the time. When the ball comes available for Roy Laidlaw, just notice the angle of run by Alan Tate. He strains the lineup. He runs straight. But Matt Duncan does extremely well there to pick the ball up with one hand to go over. Uh, good play made by the Scottish back row. Gavin Hastings. But he's pulled it round again. And so another chance of extra points goes astray. But the Scots are in the lead by 11 points to 10. And there the uh, Scots in the crowd thrilled. And all aware of where the camera is. Jonathan Davis goes for the dead ball. And succeeds. Well, Scotland-Wales matches over the last uh, 10, 15 years have produced almost unfailingly marvellous play, and this one is certainly living up to that tradition. Gavin Hastings. Through there goes Derek White. White to Calder. Calder surges into Mark Ring. Taken on again by Cronin. Derek White, magnificent Scottish forward play. Now it's Laidlaw, Andrew Kerr, Scott Hastings. Hastings half through. Feeding on to Laidlaw. Down goes Norrie Rowan. We'll have a scrimmage because the mall fell in, says Guy Bressy. And the crowd everywhere, you can hear the clapping for that effort by the Scots. And Derek White, what a surge by him. Fellow who's played in three positions for Scotland. There he is, number eight. Lock, flanker and number eight. There, David Young, the tight head prop, the youngster in the side, the youngest prop forward to be capped by Wales, 19 when he played against England in the World Cup. Laidlaw, typical sniping run by Laidlaw, pick up by Campbell, Campbell on to Rowan, Rowan caught by May over the 22. Now it's Laidlaw again, Laidlaw out to Kerr, Kerr to Gavin Hastings, a marvellous tackle by Jonathan Davis. The little standoff really saved a try there because Gavin Hastings, 15 stone of him, was on the run. Second clipped Scottish line out to Damien Cronin, taken by Laidlaw, out to Kerr, long to Finlay Calder. Finley Calder, caught by Paul Moriarty, Laidlaw again, copybook stuff here as Gavin Hastings goes, tries to hand off Jonathan Davis. And I must say, Bill, it says a lot for Davis tackling in that way. Well, he's pulled off two almost try-saving tackles there on Gavin Hastings, but notice cleverly how the Scottish pack, they drive midfield and then they very quickly break back using Roy Laidlaw, Laidlaw of the blind side. Very intelligent play by the Scots. Now that's the Welsh goal line, and Ian Watkins wants to pick his spot right here. 
meant for Noster, taken in fact by Phillips, the blindside flank forward, Phil May drives, Watkins back and Jones clears, that was absolute copybook stuff, and Robert Jones had no doubt as to what he had to do on that occasion. But what a sizzling game, we've had four superb tries so far. Welsh 22. Long one by Callender for Finlay Calder. Derek White. White charges. Almost in front of the Welsh posts. Lovely ball again for Laidlaw. Laidlaw switching. Laidlaw into Finlay Calder again. Callender drives. Caught by May. And a penalty for offside against the Welshman. Jonathan Davis thought it was a penalty to Wales. And so Gavin Hastings will ponder this kick very carefully because he's, uh, he's uh, already missed three from out on that left-hand side. This one almost as simple as uh, a kick can be in this cauldron of Cardiff Arms Park on an occasion like this. Gavin Hastings then. Straight on a plumb line, that one. 14 points to 10. They have a couple of minutes to go to the break. And Gavin Hastings has reached 200 points in internationals. And there aren't many fellas who've managed that. 201 points now for Scotland in 16 internationals. Well, I think the quietness in the ground is because everybody's gathering their breath again because it has been hectic, it's been technically very good and it's so exciting. Paul Thorburn then, a slimmer Paul Thorburn going for a big bang and Gavin Hastings just puts his foot on the dead ball line and we're almost at the break. Gavin Hastings, very long. Mark Ring. Going to kick, change his mind. Changes it back again. Gavin Hastings. Well, he's full of tricks. He's a great joker, Mark Ring, and he certainly tricked the Scots there with his dummy kick, his suggestion of a break, and then the kick again. Scotland's 22. Callender throwing for Cronin, caught by Jeffrey. Robert Norster was round on the wrong side. Je comprends, he says. In Welsh. Yes, he didn't have to speak either French or Welsh to understand that uh, offside decision. And uh, I admire the way in which Robert Norster had a slight smile on his face when he uh, accepted the inevitable from the referee. Number six here is Roland Phillips. Neath flank forward. Hard working uh, blind side flank forward. Watkins the long one. Finley Calder got hands to it. And got hands to it again, but uh, the referee decided it had gone forward and it'll be a scrummage. Certainly Finlay Calder was very fortunate there because he must have been a good three or four yards offside and he was, he was, he was lucky there that he wasn't facing uh, Thorpe Auburn's uh, penalty there. Paul well, Moriarty looks as if he's going to pick it. Now to Robert Jones. Davies. Blethyn Bow in the dummy. This is Mark Ring. Ring the chop through. Battle by Alan Tate as he got the kick away but he's been penalised. Alan Tate penalised, penalty to Wales, Mark Ring had kicked and the referee deemed the, uh, the tackle to have been late and also that he held him down. So it's Paul Thorburn again. 
That's a marvellous kicking for Wales. Twice he's kicked five penalty goals. Just let's have a look at this. Mark Ring, you notice, had kicked through, and then Alan Tate went in there with a the tackle. A fair decision. Paul Thorburn, as I was saying, twice he's kicked five penalty goals in an international. Thorburn. He's pulled it again. He's not far out each time there. They're lovely high kicks, but he's uh, just slightly left of the posts. And so it stays at 14 points to 10 to the Scots, and we're into injury time at the break. Hastings again. Yes, an awkward one. Robert Jones and Yayan Evans, undecided. Jones, tackled there by Jeffrey. What a tackle by the flanker. Laidlaw, the chip through, meant for Noddy Rowan. Rowan, number three, leading the charge by the Scots as Jonathan Davis saves. And there's the 36-year-old looking very lively indeed in the open play. That's right, he would never anticipate at half past two that he'd be stood on the left wing chasing Roy Laidlaw's kick ahead. That at the, very optimistic the way he set off to that one. Calendar long. Richie Collins catches. Penalty for pushing. Penalty to the Scots for line out pushing. So, what a chance for Gavin Hastings. We, as I say, we're into the uh, injury time at the interval by three and a half minutes. And this would put Scotland seven points clear. He's more like his side. Of course, Gavin Hastings has been accustomed uh, this season, actually, to getting sand on which to uh, place the ball to make a tee, as they did during the World Cup. But I noticed that uh, here he's not. He's placing it on the turf. And uh, considering he's kicking against the Frenchman, one wonders if that's maybe affected him. However, let's see. Gavin Hastings. Oh, no problems with that one. Three penalty goals for the big Watsonian. 17 points to 10, Scotland lead. The whistle has gone for half-time, and that has been one of the most thrilling first halves to an international that I can remember. Four superb tries. Scotland in the lead by seven clear points. The weather holding up beautifully, the ground in great condition, and that has been a thrilling first half. Well, the crowd really are thoroughly enjoying this match. Of course, I was saying Scotland-Wales matches have that kind of reputation. And with the uh, weather and ground conditions as they are, the players are responding to that. And Gary Callender here must be very pleased indeed with the Scottish effort, and Bill especially with the Scottish forward effort. Well, it's been the loose play of the Scottish forwards that have impressed me, especially Finlay Calder and John Jeffrey there, that... I think the difference between the Scotland side and a lot of the home country side that when they drive forward, they stay on their feet so they keep the game mobile. 17 points to 10, Scotland lead at half-time. We're just about to get the second half underway. Still very good conditions indeed. Comparatively still. And Paul Thorburn already. So Paul Thorburn gets the second half going. With that long kick to Gavin Hastings. And he didn't have much of an angle. But uh, he's contributed three penalty goals and hoisted his tally to 204 points in his 16 internationals. Two big men, Robert Noster and Damian Cronin. Back there from Callender, but through there went Watkins. He's a very quick little fellow, and he did well there. Robert Jones, Jonathan Davis, Richie Collins, head on there to Bowen. Bowen out to Thorburn. Thorburn out there to Yayan Evans. The pass was bad. Gavin Hastings kicked on. Pass didn't quite go to hand. And I must say, the Scots were a little bit static at that first line-out, but it was good handling here as Richie Collins fed on. Now, Bowen did well, he dummied, and then Thorburn had a lot of room. And in fact, the pass wasn't such a bad one, it should have been taken.
got his 22. Cronin got up well. Campbell went to tie it in. John Jeffy holds back Paul Moriarty. Finley called her dummies. Not, not the ideal pass to Roy Laidler, but Kerr did well. And Scotland's debutant standoff half is pleasing all the folk in Scotland, especially down at Pointer Park, his home ground there, because he's having a steady match. Scottish 10 metres line. Watkins knocked back by White, taken by David Soule. Caught by Richie Collins, the drive on by Calder. That's the feed on to Alistair Campbell. Now it's Laidlaw, out there to Matt Duncan. Matt Duncan, not the greatest kicker in the world. Kicked on by Hastings, that was slightly forward to Corburn. Corburn the kick in, Scott Hastings catches. Scott Hastings goes, running past Richie Collins. Caught by him, just short of halfway. Wasn't held, he was allowed to get up, it was okay, the pick up by Norster. Now it's Phillips, tackled by Calder. Penalty against Wales. Well, well, I can't understand what that decision was for, because certainly I think Scott Hastings was a little bit fortunate to get away with playing uh, the, the ball on the ground there, but I just can't understand why the referee has penalised Paul Moriarty, because he's a good four or five yards behind the breakdown situation. I have to tell you that Gavin Hastings is going to kick a penalty from there. Now he's made his mark five metres inside his own half. Gavin Hastings. Oh, he's given it a great thump. What a belt he's given it. It's over! That is a Paul Thorburn for Gavin Hastings because two years ago Paul Thorburn did the same to Scotland and there Gavin Hastings has put Scotland ten points in the lead. It was a massive kick and really the Cardiff crowd are stunned a bit with the power of that one. 20 points to 10 Scotland lead. They played about three and a half minutes of the second half. Barburn. Hastings hasn't found touch Robert Jones Jones the up and under Hastings calls great flurry of blue jerseys taken by Phillips out there to Gavin Hastings the whistle had gone and Wales will have the put in well, they're as close as that. And although the Scots are ten points ahead, they won't be counting any chickens. Wales at Cardiff Arms Park, and with this back division, are capable of great things yet. But there, Ian Watkins had to have a second go at it. And a hand was used in the scrummage. And it's a penalty to Scotland. So a brief injury to Roland Phillips there. But this game uh, it speaks volumes for the fitness of both sides because although we've only just started the, the second half, that this game is being pay, played at a fantastic pace. And I think it speaks volumes for the amount of work that the respective coaches have done of both sides. And I think that if you cast our minds back to how this game would have been played last season, both sides have benefited from a World Cup. And of course the two coaches are Tony Gray who played against England and Scotland in 1968 and Derek Grant who got 14 caps in 65-68. Hastings made sure of his touch that time. And of course the Welsh side have uh, been getting some sprint training from JJ Williams, a great wing three-quarter remember. That's halfway. David Young at the front. Swansea tight head prop. 
Watkins throws. Gus Cronin got up well again, but Watkins was through, caught by Sol. That's a good ball. Robert Jones, Davis, Bowen, ring on the dummy. Hadley there. Gian Evans, Evans over the 22. Evans, the charge down by Gavin Hastings. And I was saying yesterday, this laddie, Yayan Evans, looks to me the quickest over 15 metres in the Welsh side. He is absolutely lightning sharp. And just watch, watch his acceleration here. He got an awful bad ball. But just watch this. I'm off. Alan Tate couldn't hold him. Jones, Jeffrey. Jeffrey held by Moriarty. Pick up by Richie Collins. Now it's Robert Norster. Up to the Scottish 22. Now they're all being a bit careful today because the referee's a big fella. 20 points to 10. We've played seven minutes of the second half. Scotland's 22. Jones, Davis, lovely catch. Ring, there's the big miss pass out to Hadley. Hadley high, not far enough forward. In King Gavin Hastings, taken in. Scott should win quite a good ball here as Hastings goes. And that's a beautifully manufactured punt by Gavin Hastings. Up comes Matt Duncan. It was a superb punt because he was well outside his 22. Quick throw in by Hadley, taken by Ring. Ring is away, feeding on to Richie Collins. Richie Collins up to the 22. A great tackle by Gavin Hastings. He had three men outside him. He will be annoyed with himself for that. It really was a superb opportunity. A two-man overlap winner, I thought. And Gavin Hastings made absolutely sure with a tackle. Richie Collins must really be kicking himself here because he had at least two men outside him and at a forward you're far better letting the ball get it to the backs see here for the long throw Collins picks it up well look outside him that he's got at least two or three men there you know he's got Bob Norster and Bledin Bowen there but it was a cracking tackle by Gavin Hastings but it was made easy because Collins basically just ran straight at him as opposed to using the men outside him Great for the game also, Bill, to see the quick throw-in being taken, a huge throw by Hadley that started it off. You see it there. Not many referees actually in the home countries would have allowed that, but I think the French referees, they are a little bit looser and they allow players to get away with it. And here he did again, the Richie Collins driving down the middle of the park, he's got Norster outside him, and yet he makes it easy for Hastings by running straight at him. Scott's really got a big shove on there, but Jones has it. Out to Davies. Davies chased by Jeffrey. That's the chip kick, and it's awkward for the Scots. He is really a little wizard, this fellow. That was a kind of half-hit drop kick, but placed perfectly. And Wales are in that strong position. We've played ten minutes of the second half. Scotland 20-10 ahead. Through there went Richie Collins again. They're all falling in, they left the scrimmage. Well, of course, when the ball goes in, the referees have been told to uh, blow up right away if the ball isn't available. But what a position this is for the Welshman. All kinds of options on here. This is the most difficult situation to defend. Wales going for the pushover. Moriarty. Robert Jones, he's held though. Finlay Calder has it. He's robbed him. But they'll go back. Five metres scrummage. And if Robert Jones had maybe been uh, a stone heavier, he might have made that one. Listen to the roars for Wales here, trying to lift them. Ian Watkins had to have two shots at that. 
Moriarty, Jones. Yayan Evans held there by Laidlaw. Wales through Norster battling on. Paul Moriarty. And they're still within five metres. Very good defence there by the Scots because they made their tackles behind the gain line, which gave them all the extra space that they just needed to keep Wales out. Now, this is a scrummage the Scots will want to keep absolutely steady. Because if they get turned that way again, of course, it brings Richie Collins round and gives him a kind of metre and a half of a start, as it were. And I must say, that little fella, Jeremy Pugh, He's not the biggest prop forward I've ever seen, but he's, he's scrummaged very well. Look at him there, he's got a lovely straight back. Oh, the Hastings get charged down. And it'll be another scrum five because the Scots took it over their own goal line and it was made dead. So will Wills go for another pushover? Or all kinds of uh, moves on for them here. But they've been swung a bit. Robert Jones does the dummy, out to Jonathan Davis. Davis, the long switch out to Hadley. Hadley's knocked on. What an opportunity for the big fella who scored two lovely tries against England. You can see how disgusted he is. And this is a storm that the Scots are uh, really having to dig in to weather. Still just uh, 15 metres from their own line. Twenty points to ten. Laidlaw, Hastings. Now Wales bringing a change in their lineup. They've withdrawn Richie Collins and uh, their other flanker, Roland Phillips. They've left in just three. There's Phil May, 14 seasons with Flanethley, got his cap at 31. Robert Norster and Damien Cronin, who've had a great battle. May. Jones to Davis, to Phillips. Phillips half caught by Campbell, there's a chance here as Jeremy Pugh goes. Pugh tackled there by Campbell. Campbell annoyed that he'd missed the first tackle, got the second one in. And Jeremy Pugh thought for a moment there that uh, his day had come. He wasn't far away either. Played a great running props game against America, I remember. He was uh, all over the place. That one went to the far side. Robert Jones again. Oh, what a pass to Ring. They've opened up the whole way. Ring caught and thrown chance here for Scotland as Gavin Hastings throw, Adrian Hadley caught out there to Yayan Evans, tackled by Jeffrey. brilliant pass from Evans, out to Jones to Ring, that was magic stuff, Ring going all the way, inside there to Watkins, Watkins the hooker over the 22, now it's fed back from Phillips, Jones again, Ring to Hadley, Hadley to Thorburn, Thorburn still knocked over, pick up again by Ring, Alan Tate goes through, Blethyn Bowen now. Oh dear. They're just about as breathless as I am, those fellas down there. But some of the Welsh manufacturing of the pass delighted the crowd here. It really was super stuff. As you say, Bill, it was great stuff by the Welsh backs. They were going backwards and yet under pressure, they were still able to get the ball away. And here we see now Robert Jones, the long pass again, and thought. Paul Thorburn, he's really taking the ball stood still there. And notice how quickly the Scots are up in defence. Whilst Alan Tate knocks the ball on, the referee obviously has to penalise it, uh, give a scrum for that offence. There's one thing certain, Bill, those fellas will enjoy the celebrations tonight if they're able to do them because they must be bruised and battered by now.
Yes, the last ten minutes have been very similar to a seven-a-side competition, really. And you've got to appreciate that these guys have got a scrummage, they've got to work hard, and yet they're still running around the field. Tremendous stuff. Still just outside Scotland's 22. Jones, Davis, very deep. Miss out pass to Bowen, miss out pass to Hadley. Now Hadley trying to go outside Hastings, half caught by him and forced into touch by Matt Duncan. So that lovely outward swear by Adrian Hadley, very dangerous in a big man like that. Lost his boot, they play with carpet slippers nowadays. See no ankle cover at all. Campbell got hands to it. Ball had gone forward from Scotland. We've played 17 minutes of the second half, 20 points to 10, Scotland lead. Now watch this positioning of Jonathan Davis here. He's pretty deep. He's well away because Jones has a marvellous pass off either hand. Just let's watch this. Woof! Away it goes. Jonathan Davis. Bowen on the dummy run. That's Paul Thorburn. Thorburn almost up to the post. Taken on there by Richie Collins. Watkins driving. The try is given. Ian Watkins, the hooker. Oh, they'll be thrilled down at Emmerville with that one. Just as he is. It was another very good try indeed. 20 points to 14. They played almost 12 minutes. And this was it. What a lovely pass. Now watch how Paul Thorburn came in. Two dummy moves. The pass looks slightly forward, but whoa, he was going like a train. The drive on by Richie Collins and then Watkins surged on there with Moriarty and Norster helping. Good score. Paul Thorburn, straight through. And here we say, just notice how the two Scottish centres are drawn in by the double-double scissors by Davis. And then Thorburn altered his angle of run well. And just look at Moriarty here, because he's the one who supplies the impetus to Watkins to crash over for the try. It's a really the pressure that uh, Moriarty gave behind Watkins and the momentum that took him over. So we've really got a game on here now as if we hadn't had during the whole of it. 20 points to 16, almost into the last quarter. Gavin Hastings. Jonathan Davis. Gavin Hastings. Oh, that's very high. Thorburn underneath, called for the mark and given. He was stationary, both feet on the ground, has to call for the mark, has to be inside the 22. Oh, he sliced that. Matt Duncan waits. Got it second time. It's another high one and Duncan's up very fast. Paul Moriarty waits. The free kick is given. Always difficult, of course, for the kicker to hear the whistle in this noise. Moriarty has sliced it. Laidlaw waits. Laidlaw, Gavin Hastings. Another up and under, Phil May underneath it. that big crowd up there on the East Terrace have had, like the rest of us, a thoroughly entertaining 60 minutes and more to come as Callender throws long to Jeffrey. Jeffrey to Scott Hastings. Scott Hastings well tackled by Richie Collins. That's Yayan Evans. Caught by Ivan Tukolo. Chance here for Wales. Out to Bledin Bowen. Mark Ring. Ring the chip through. Met for Hadley.
Mark Bring, who loves playing stand-up half, of course. There, Alistair Campbell, Scotland's uh, luck forward. First capped in 1984 in the Grand Slam season. And a brief stoppage for an injury away across on the far side there. So there it is, four points between them. And really, Wales are very much back in the hunt, Bill. Oh, very much so. Whilst they were ten points behind, they were never out of the game because every time that the backs got the ball, they looked as though they could score on any one of the occasions. I think the main problem that they have at the moment, they seem to have a lack of confidence in Paul Thorburn coming into the line. That So you've noticed how the wingers have come into the line of decoy runners as opposed to using Paul Thorburn. And of course, one point about Paul Thorburn is that he is quicker. He's slimmed down a bit and he's sharper. Noddy Rowan is the injured uh, player, the 36-year-old from Muir up in Edinburgh there. And there's Norrie Rowan who got his first cap against Wales in 1980 down here. David McLean, the Scottish physiotherapist with him. And uh, quite sure whether he's coming off or not, Norrie Rowan. But uh, Alex Brewster will be getting warmed up down below us. But Rowan is OK. And good to see that. Rostock takes Jones Jonathan Davis oh there's another searcher Tukalo out to Hastings good bit of retrieving there by Tukalo but what a teasing kick that was Jonathan Davis has put Wales into so many good attacking positions just with that boot and here's another one inside Scotland's 22 the survival of the fittest now 17 minutes to go 20 points to 16 Scotland lead Watkins high for Richie Collins didn't get it Paul Moriarty dead thrown down by Jeffrey and John Jeffrey number six there certainly has been playing to try and keep his place in the Scottish side remember he was uh, omitted after the Dublin game Welsh have turned picked up by Finlay Calder Calder trying to feed his number eight forward there referee deciding there was no offside no rock or mall good chance here as Davis switches long pass out to Bowen Bowen back inside to Robert Jones Jones the kick through Laidlaw touches down, it was over the line for the 22, brilliant judgment by the Scottish scrum half. Gavin Hastings trying a quick one, the knockout to Hadley, back inside to Richie Collins. Everything's happening here at Cardiff, this is Phillips caught by Gavin Hastings and by Seoul. Noster couldn't get it away, a penalty to Wales for offside. And not for the first time, a Gavin Hastings drop out attempt being charged down has uh, given Scotland real problems. It's easy to say in retrospect, but it'd be far, it would have been far wiser for him just to have settled things down because things were getting very frantic. Play was going at 19 miles an hour. I'm certain his forwards would have been cursing him for that dropout. It just needed to just steady the thing down. So we go back to Paul Thorburn with two conversions to his credit. And a fairly straightforward one for him. Yes, on a plumb line. Seven points for Paul Thorburn, 147 altogether, and there's one point in it. And they've just 15 minutes to go. Well, the record of high scoring in those matches is continuing 21-15 last season 22-15 the season before 25-21 in 85 Hastings trying to give them as little an angle as possible for the kick but Robert Jones good strong left foot there 
very well equipped little scrum half and with I think the fastest pass in the uh, championship at the moment Welsh 22 Calder to White White charging, tackled by Ring Calder again and had gone forward Now the Scots will want, to, if possible, to keep the Welsh penned up here for a while just to uh, settle themselves back into the game. Scottish scrummage has improved in this second half, but there, lovely ball away from Jones to Davis. Gavin Hastings switches to his brother Scott. Scott up the touchline, over the 22. Well, he's a big, powerful lad, and he loves to run with it. That was a typical Hastings brother ploy. Roy Laidlaw out to care. On the line there to Alan Tate. Tate caught there by Paul Moriarty. Throws him off. Tate going through. Tate almost to the line. Oh, what an effort by the Kelsa centre. He knocked off three or four forwards in the process. That physical dimension that Scotland have in their back division shown to great effect there. And that's the Welsh goal line. Josh, we remember, don't we, Bill, that Finlay Calder scored a try from here early on. I was going to make exactly the same point there. It's a crucial line out for Wales, and I'm certain that the Scottish back row will be looking here to uh, notch another try. Knock back. Paul Moriarty takes it in. Referee's whistle had gone. Scotland's put in. So it's as tight as that for Wales and indeed for Scotland. Derek White is poised to pick up. He's got to stay bound with at least one arm. White picks up, gives to Laidlaw, the switch to Kerr. Out there to Scott Hastings. Scott Hastings takes the tackle from Ring. Stays on his feet, did well. That was good for the big man. He had to stay in his feet to give the forwards a chance. Scotland get the put in. They were going forward, the referee says. Remember, just one pointed at Scotland, leading 20 points to 19. So, they're right in front of the Welsh post here. You notice Andrew Kerr, who's dropped a lot of goals for Kelso, is right behind the scrummage. That's the view he gets of the goal posts. Laidlaw goes, out to Calder. Calder just stuck his head down and lost, uh, lost possession for a moment. Wales with the put-in. That was a good decision by the referee because he noticed that Finlay Cole had actually knocked the ball on before he was tackled by Paul Thorburn. A good decision there by the referee, but really Scotland have been on the rack for most of this game and yet they, with one missed touch by Jonathan Davis, they come straight back into the game and have really been pressurising the Welsh for the last three or four minutes. Now can the Scots do anything to the Welsh strummage here? They actually seem to pull them to try and... Uh, pull them away, they're staying bound, the pick up by Paul Moriarty but the referee decides that they were offside that they weren't properly bound in 10 minutes of the match remaining, 20 points to 19 for Scotland Thorburn a mighty hoof the Scottish 10 metres line Phil May getting a bit of advice there from Jeremy Pugh Richie Collins right at the back there and what a battle those breakaway forwards have had Callender throws Jeffrey takes Laid Lobarrows Kerr out to Tate Tate to Scott Hastings Scott Hastings to Tukalo Tukalo Chipped ahead, back goes Thorburn, but it went straight out. 
Ivan Kukolo who scored that lovely try against the Frenchman. They've just gone halfway. Richie Collins, the uh, South Wales policeman there, number seven at the back. Cronin got hands to it, through went Watkins. Laidlaw tried to stop him. Now it's a good ball for Wales. Jonathan Davis, along the line to ring to Bowen. This is to Hadley, Hadley wide. Hadley has Yayan Evans inside him. Gavin Hastings takes. And so that was another brilliant Welsh move because not only did Adrian Hadley here get the ball, but inside him was the other winger from away over on the right-hand side. Eight minutes of the match to go. 20 points to 19, Scotland lead. Norshire had dropped back, but he was thwarted by White. Out to Davis, Davis the drop goal. Looks a bit boozy, but it's there. Jonathan Davis is 11th drop goal for Wales, and Wales have gone into the lead. 22 points to 20. They've just eight minutes to go. It was a lovely ball to get from the line out. Robert Norster got hands first, then Phil May fed it, and then watch this. It was a little bit inebriated, but it made it, and they all count. Gavin Hastings restarts. Tate. Richie Collins, Derek White, the drive on by David Soule. Laidlaw. Andrew Kerr. Kerr checking, but he's in trouble. All his forwards are on the floor that's where he needed a little kick up into the corner I think Welsh 22 well great uh, joy round the ground as the referee indicates that Wales get the put in and the Coral Legion start again of the flashing boot and away they go again another lovely touch kick relieving the pressure sending his forwards upfield and all Wales is delighted can the Scots produce that little something extra that would pull it back again that's halfway Callender using the tail again Finlay Calder to White Laidlaw, David Soul charges on there to Alistair Campbell. Beautifully back to Jonathan Davis. There's a chance here. Bleden Bowen goes. Now it's ball Thorburn. Thorburn inside to Bleden Bowen. A super tackle by Gavin Hastings. Richie Collins on to Phillips. Outside Scotland's 22. Down goes Phil May to try and rescue it for Wales. And he's succeeded. Robert Jones goes. Jones beautifully tackled by Laidlaw. Inside to Hadley. Watkins again. Five metres shot to the Scottish line. A surging attack by the Welshman as the whistle goes. Ball had gone forward. Absolute tremendous play there by the Welsh backs that they picked up a loose ball and it's refreshing at this level to see how direct and how straight they, they run the ball and Bledin Boy must take a lot of credit for this and yet we saw there even Phillips there and all the rest of the lads that they're just driving on the supporting the runners so well that it's refreshing to see at this level it was really a marvellous bit of work watch and see how the Welsh backs move this ball away they're so quick, look at that, out of the tackle, Adrian Hadley, beautiful timing of the pass, and eventually Ian Watkins was tackled, short of the line. And Wales once more in this strong position, 
even if Scotland win the ball, the pressure is on them. They can't really do or expect to do an awful lot with it. From an attacking sense, they've just got to try and clear it and start again. Robert Jones managed to hustle Redlaw, pick up by Calder. Redlaw's pass back was a poor one. Gavin Hastings is tackled, it'll be another scrum five, and Robert Jones was in with a tackle. Again, the evidence of his quickness of foot across the ground, a little Welsh scrum half. They've gone forward initially, and the scrummage will have to uh, lift and go down again. We've only about four minutes left, and Wales ahead, 22-20. Scots have held it, now it's Laidlaw, Laidlaw out there to Calder. Pick up by Jeffrey, and a kick into touch by Jonathan Davis, who had a look at Alistair Campbell and then, and then fought twice of himself. I would think you look for Jonathan Davis maybe to drop another goal here. He had a word with Bluthin by the captain, he just, he just cleaned his boots, so it wouldn't surprise me to see him having another go here for a drop goal. He went out wide there, as you would see, and had a word with Bluthin Bow and his captain. Will I have a pop, he said, or do you want a pass? Well, he'll make up his mind when he gets the ball, I'm sure. Robert Norster again. Ian Watkins, tackled there by Alistair Campbell. So there's the big man from Hoyk in the south of Scotland. Be in National League duty next Saturday against Melrose, but at the moment, this is all important. Taken in again by Campbell, now it's Laidlaw, referee in the way, Andrew Kerr. That's very high, it's unusual, but it's a Gary Owen, he's keeping the ball in play. Pick up by Hadley, Hadley caught by Duncan. Pick up and drive by Phillips. Of course, the knee flank has been in a lot today. Now it's Jones, Richie Collins, out again to Jones, the switch to Davis, brilliant handling. This is Bledin Bowen, straight out. Whilst Bledin Bowen would be disappointed with that kick, I'm certain the skipper is happy to keep the, the play right down in the Scottish half because it's going to take a great effort by Scotland now to break out 70, 80 yards as we're moving towards full time. Just a couple of minutes or so to go. Laidlaw getting Phil May there. Hugh drives on. Roland Phillips again. He's had a superb match. He's, he's an unusual type of flanker, this one. He loves the unceremonious chores. Great support work. And a wonderful driving forward. Into the last minute, bit of injury time to go as Robert Jones feeds again. Jonathan Davis, the drop goal once more. Is it wide? The arm is raised and he's done it again. And that surely must be the score that wins the game for Wales. 25 points to 20 they lead. And we're almost into injury time. Again, the line-out was the crucial one, Robert Norster, and how Jones got the ball away to Davies. He had a lot of room, once it was through, no bother. The pitch has been invaded, and Jonathan Davies is asking the, all the supporters to clear the pitch. They thought, perhaps, that the final whistle had gone. And here we see a super ball by Norster. But look at the pass by Jones, under pressure, gives Jonathan Davis all the time in the world, and that one would have gone over from at least another 30 or 40 yards out. A magnificent effort. We've seen in the last 10 minutes two drop goals that have really sealed the game for Wales. So he's dropped 12 goals for Wales, Jonathan Davis. Hastings restarts. Up there went White. Laidlaw sniping. Ian Watkins was maybe on the wrong side there. Referees allowing them to play on. Sol trying to work it clear. Laidlaw burrowing again. Penalty against the Welshman. 
holding on in the deck I think preventing fair release Scots must run it I think Laidlaw goes Finlay Calder out to Jeffrey. Jeffrey half through half caught there by Richie Collins now it's Laidlaw again Laidlaw to Kerr Kerr kick on there as Gavin Hastings goes into the 22 Jeremy Pugh is there saving for Wales to scrimmage Scotland's ball 25 points to 20 the four point try gives Scotland still a hope although we are well into injury time remember if they score a try they must be allowed to take the conversion Derry quite didn't quite control that one and Bledon Boehm is away to ring and ring has no doubt what to do and the Scots will be furious about that because they'd won the strike it was at the number eight feet and Wales pinched it what it needed there was a fairly quick ball the whistle has gone for the end of the match and Wales have won a superb international match of cut and thrust 25 points to 20 they fought back after being 10 points down we've had what one two five tries altogether two superb drop goals by Jonathan Davis and Bill that's been some game it was quite the most magnificent game that I've seen for a long time that we saw it's a fascinating battle that the Scottish forwards had the ascendancy in the first half yet in the second that the Welsh kept coming back at them and really at the end of the day it was the extra pace that the Welsh backs had and how Wales were prepared to use them but really Scotland must be feeling very disappointed indeed to have scored 20 points down here and ended up on the losing side a magnificent battle today great game of rugby and as a result with this 25 points to 20 win Wales record their third victory over Scotland in their last four meetings this their 24th win in 31 games against Scotland at Cardiff Scotland's championship hopes of course lie in ruins now with the second defeat in three games and England to play as for Wales well all things are possible from their 100% record in this championship so far played to 1-2